Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Praise God. Can we give God glory? Good morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, isn't it? Amen. Thank you for coming. And I'd just like to recognize uh, uh, there's a very uh, special dad that is here, uh, Victoria's dad. Troy, can you just met him earlier. He's visiting. As always, it's always a pleasure. And also, I met Ken, I think. Uh, Ken somewhere. Is, is Ken here? God bless you. And for those, amen, if you didn't have a chance to meet everyone, please thank you so much for coming and making um, this Sunday celebration a part of your uh, morning. Thank you. Um, again, we thank you for coming. And I noticed someone that is special also, uh, Randy. Randy, can you wave? Where's Randy? There's Randy. He's part of our regional um, worship team way back when, about 200 years ago. And he came back and he says, that, uh, Pastor, I'm, I'm ready to uh, just, I, he, he, he needed a, some, some, uh, some time, a, a break, and, uh, and he's here. Yeah, glory to God. I just want to make a uh, 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 Thanksgiving uh, and praise to the Lord. We're here. Pastor Jude and I are here, and, and we've already told some of our, uh, one of our, our daughters. Um, and it's a miracle. I just want you to know that God um, has your back, and he's, our, he's got our back. Last night on our way from uh, Jigo, driving to the, uh, going to the church, uh, do, uh, going through the back road of NCS, um, it, was a, it was a close call, actually. We were driving towards, uh, going south going towards here. There's a new, uh, if you notice that there's this new gate at uh, Anderson, this, the new gate, not the main gate, the gate, it's kind of curb. Have you driven that side? And so we were driving, uh, no, uh, comfortably, I think I was driving uh, uh, within the speed limit, right, honey? And, and out, of, uh, out, of my, uh, out, of, out of nowhere, uh, I, I hope he's, if you're here or, or if, you're, if you're here, uh, no, you're forgiven. Now, if you if you're the one, a fast car just making the curve, and I think he didn't anticipate that it was a curve. It went towards our uh, our side. He, he just kind of crossed our path, and he, he was, this car was running fast, was traveling fast, and it was a blink of an eye. And I think the Lord just kind of gave me the uh, the, um, the the um, the wisdom to pulled to the, to the side, and of course that side, thank God, is a little bit uh, flat on the side. You can hear, you know, as soon as we pull in, the car went by us toward me, and then and Pastor G was, was you know, she, she was shaken, but as far as I'm concerned, I was so cool and collect, you know. <laughs> no, not, not, and we just, we just kind of swung, and there's a little ravine on this side, but we just kind of made it, and then it went back to the uh, to the road, and, and the first in, uh, in, impulse of a, of a man, right? Turn around and, <laughs> right? Turn around and just give him, no, no I, didn't, I just, I was just, it was, it was an ordained time, and I think, and we, Pastor Jude and I just kind of, you know, there's still something to do for us. I think God is, has our back, and, uh, and thank God we're here, and nothing happened. It was, it was, if you have been in an accident or happen to be close to an accident, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like a head-on, but we were able to scoot out, and, and I think I had a little bit of, uh, of uh, muscle. Uh, and I told my wife, honey, can you massage me for a while? I, I, I think I find you know, that, that muscle power. 
Anyway, and that is good. All right. Well, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, understanding the Father's heart through a story that's told for so many. It has been, you've known this already for a while. It is about the Father's heart, understanding God's heart. And, and, and I know somehow, what is God? Well, sometimes Jesus Christ portraying God through stories of parables. And we've been going through the parables, right? Perhaps you have read this. You have heard about the story. It has, it has crossed something that, that has been so used to. But today, I, it is my prayer that God will gl- give you a glimpse and understand his love for you. It has to do with forgiveness, restoration, and acceptance. Would you please turn your Bibles to uh, the Gospel of St. Luke? And we will read through uh, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 15. A very um, familiar part of Scripture, Luke chapter 15. And if you happen to be with, with someone, could I ask you, please, if you don't mind, would you stand along and, and, and uh, just to honor God's word today? Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 11. And uh, if you are with someone who doesn't have a Bible, please share your word with them. Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 11, it says, Then a certain, and he said, Jesus Christ is talking to the story, he says, A certain man had two sons, and the younger one said to his father, Father, give me the portion, my portion of goods that fall to me. So the father divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with the prodigal living. Verse 14, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his fold to feed swines or pigs. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. The next verse, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have enough bread and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and earth and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Verse 20, that's fine. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way of his father's, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. And verse 24 says, And this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Father, again, we thank you this morning. We all have stories of our own, stories that we may be embarrassed and, and we don't want to tell anyone. Stories of the past that seems to haunt us. But today, God, I pray that you will help us understand our Heavenly Father's heart, that you want us to be forgiven, you want us to be restored, you want us to be accepted. And today, God, I pray your word is alive, it is powerful, it is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates and divides between the spirit and soul and even, even the, the, the bones and the marrows. And indeed today, God, it is an ordained time. Your word discerns our thoughts and our action. There's nothing hidden. So I ask you, Lord, that your word will find good grounds today and we will understand our Heavenly Father's heart. It's time to go home. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone will say, amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. You know, we all have past. We all have things that we have done in the past that hopefully we we're proud, but most of the time, things that we want to put on the side and let it burn. Sometimes we would say, man, that is the past. 
And for some, it is something that they can't go over. It's something that will haunt them. One of the things that as a pastor is this, that it is my prayer that we will understand a glimpse of our Father's heart. Heavenly, our Father's heart has to do with love, forgiveness. John chapter 3, verse 6 says, For God so loved the world that he gave, right? He gave. This particular story, it is somehow they, they would call it the prodigal son. Prodigal, if you are writing notes, is this. Prodigal means lavishly, recklessly, with abandonment. That is prodigal. Recklessly spending your wealth, spending your substance recklessly without any, any uh, limit. That is prodigal. At the end of the story, you will find out that the, 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 more, the prodigal is not the son. It is the father. The story is about us. See, the thing is this. When you talk about this story, you would have to understand where Jesus Christ was coming from. If I may direct your attention on verse 1 of chapter 15, you would notice this. Look at that. If, if read that with me, please. And it says that then all the tax collectors, look at that. This God is so good, isn't he? It says here, he told three stories to tell them about God's love. Do you, do you hear that? Do you see that? It says, then all the tax collectors, the sinners, drew near to him to hear him. But on verse 2, it says, and the Pharisees and the scribe complained. There are always those people, right? Oh, you know that person? You will never be, you won't, won't amount to anything. Your son, your daughter, they, will need, they won't amount to anything. Why? Because those are, it is like you, you're programmed already to fail. That's why parents, whether your son or daughter is not that, uh, 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 no, they're, they're somehow challenged, give them, speak life to them. Because it is enough when they go out, there will be other people that will tell them that they cannot do anything. And this one has nothing to do with knowledge. It has to do with life and acceptance. Look at this. The Pharisees were the one who are the teachers of the law. They said, they complained saying, this man, the thing about Jesus, he says, he's receiving sinners and he eats with them. So Jesus Christ in his heart as a savior he tells stories and parables that they can understand. He says, here was a father. Now, what we are going to do is we will take about the, the stages. If you're, look, if, you're, if you're taking notes, take stages of the demise of the son and then the forgiveness and then the restoration. Are you ready? All right. On the part of the son is this. Number one is this. On verse 12, and he says, and the angry one said to his father, father, Give me my portion. Number one is this. People don't plan just, just to do things. They actually begin to internalize what they need to do. Number one is this. A desire to be what? Self-sufficient. Independent. The son has a desire first. The desire will culminate until it comes out. Stage number one is this. The second stage is this. He demanded. The son demanded. Now, if you are using New King James Version, it is easy for you to follow, right? But if you are uh, uh, using another version, that's fine. Those keywords will be a stages that you would note, and if you can have it underlined, and it says, and in verse 12, Father, give me the portion of goods. Now, remember this. In the Middle Eastern culture, the older brother or sister has the authority to ask not the younger ones. The younger ones come later. The young, the older generation has the blessings. But this one has a prideful spirit saying, demand. He, he didn't ask the dad. He says, dad, can you please, would you? No, he demanded. He demanded. Now, the thing is this. Jesus Christ is telling on the earring side of the parish is this. Our God is more than sufficient. His heart. See, the dad, the story told him that the dad didn't say anything, but he divided them. The younger one didn't have an authority, but he demanded. He demanded his portion. When in fact, the young, the older one, supposed to be the one to tell him, that's my portion, don't give it away. And yet the dad, 
the dad. The dad is the one who invited him without any hesitation. Now, the, that's the man. The second one is the number, th- uh, verse 13, and not many days. See, between 12 and 13, there's this pause, and not many days after, he traveled. The next one is this, and he journeyed. Stage number two, he departed. Departed. He journeyed. He departed. He physically de- departed. And he went to a far country. Stage number three, distance. If you have that word, distance. He traveled to a far distance. Now, why is that? When a person sins, the, la- the first thing, the last thing that they want to go is the church. Or when a person is not in the right relationship with either the church or God, they will try to hide away. Now, the distance here is both physical distance and relational. Now, put your thoughts here, please, and go to Genesis with me. Genesis chapter 3, okay? And we'll go back right on. And you'll find out what I meant about a relational. Genesis chapter 3, an episode wherein when, when the, the father, our father, Okay, are you there? Genesis chapter 3. All right. Let's start with verse 7. All right, this is after God the Father told Adam and Eve. All right. Verse 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and that made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, In the cool of the day, they already heard that before, but this time it's different. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. They used to walk together in the coolness of the day. When you have fellowship with God, you don't have any embarrassment, right? You you feel like a small, like a little daughter would run to the father, but when you know if they become naughty, they will try to hide. This is what exactly what happened to Adam and Eve. And it says, and the Lord, look at this. And they heard, and then and his wife hid himself from the presence of the Lord among the trees. Verse 9. Here's what I'm talking about, the distance. And it says, And the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Adam, where are you? Somebody said, Duh, God, you, you know you're God. No, God knows where you are. You, me, myself. He knows where we are physically and also relationally. He knows us. When God asks you, Albert, where are you? Judy, where are you? He's not talking about distance. He's talking about how far is your heart from me? How far are you? He was talking about how are you now? We used to walk together. That's what it is. We used to have friendship. Now you're so far away. When I ask you, where are you? I know where you are, but I want you to know where you are. Our God loves each one of us. He loves you and I dearly. The last thing he wants is for us to be destroyed without any hope. But God loves each one of us. Our past may haunt us, but our God is secure for that, and you will see it. Find out later on. So let's go back to Luke 15, okay? So that is the distance, the, the, the distance that God is talking by Genesis chapter 8. The next one is this. Verse 13, and, and that many days he went and journeyed, and then on wasted all his possessions, if it is a different tra- translation, possessions or anything, There's a term called dissipation, dissipation. Dissipation is another term for squandering. Now, uh, there's no more, um, there's no more. There's no more boundaries, so I I will do whatever I want. I will have a relationship with whoever I want to. Nobody is going to control me anymore. I am done. That's what it is. This man squandered everything that he had. As a matter of fact, his possessions is not his. It is his still is that livelihood that is still that in in short he was wasting his father's possessions he's wasting his possessions using everything that he had so dissipation squandering and then 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 he went on into he drained himself what happened he began to be in want what happened here he became to be destitute 
See, when you are away from God, for a reason, for a season, it might, it might feel okay, but eventually, especially when somebody's praying for you, the conviction of the Holy Spirit will begin to, to temper you. Go back, go back. That's the call. Because we will know later on, the Father was waiting for him. And then he says he squandered, he, he became destitute, which simply means he lost every means he became by himself. You know, don't wait when you and I lose everything for us to look at up to God. Our God can allow situations in our life not to condemn us, but to run back to the Father. Sometimes they would say, why God, why me? Well, sometimes God has his own way of dealing with us. We are God's children, but we are individually different. I have three beautiful daughters. I deal with them differently. One of them is, uh, is this. One of them is this. The way I deal with this is different from there because if I deal with that, this one will cry. This one will fight back. This one will, I don't know. That's why God, you and I, God knows. When we become nothing else, sometimes when we are alone, we say, God, when we look around, Lord, I'm hopeless. Remember this. When you feel hopeless, just look up. Never forget that our Father in any situation will never leave us or forsake us. You've got the glory. All right. Now, the next one is this. He began to be, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods. His honor become degraded, degraded. Degradation is when you are at the top of your mountain and you become nothing. Degraded. Now, this story can be anyone. But the thing about this, the next one, the resurrection, all right, from the degradation, and now it is now. Verse 16. But when he came to, his, to himself, or he came to his senses, when he began to be, why? Wait a second now. During the time that he had those, he didn't care about his family, he didn't care about anyone. But when he got, he has nothing. The word of God says he came to his senses. Now, underline the word, he came to his himself. That is the word reflection. Reflection. Reflection is, is like looking back and says, wait a second now. Because when everything is said and done. See, here's the thing about us. Um, Marcus, would you please, if you don't mind, come up here. Uh, I'm going to uh, say, for example, if I, hey, Marcus, how are you? All right. Uh, what's your name? Marcus. Marcus, yeah. Tell me about yourself. Uh, okay. Yeah? Come on, some more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you're good looking and. You know. Some say. Yeah, some say. Special wife, okay? Yeah, okay. Thank you. So when you meet someone, they will always talk about the one who identifies them who they are, right? Some people will say, hey, how are you? What's your, uh, uh, um, what's your name? This and then, I'm a blah, blah. I'm the boss of that boss. I'm positionally. So they're trying to, to cloak themselves with titles so that because if you prod some more, you will know eventually it could be a, a little boy that is crying for hope. A little girl that is crying for love. A man or a woman that's trying to make their way. And so they begin to cloak those. The cloaking, are, the, the, cloaking the, the things that we add value, the roof over our head, the car that we drive, the type of people that we, anything that ties to us makes us a part of us, but we are not that person. It becomes a way of identifying our level in society. But in this case, when everything was lost, when you and I have nothing, when you are in your deathbed, when you are in a, in, in about to, to expire, 
You don't talk about, oh, man, I wish I could spend more time in my office. I wish I can this. No, nothing. You become a reality between God and man. You begin to say, man, this is my last opportunity. And you will say that's that deathbed type of prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Why? Because you know that you know that you know. When you are stripped of everything that we can hold dearly, we begin to see ourselves who we are. And so, in this case, God allowed to be that he will be stripped of everything that he has so that in reality, the real person will rise up. And then when he says, wait a second now. God is a spirit that continues to remind us of his love. There's nothing wrong with the message, but sometimes it is when we begin to say, I've got time. That is the most dangerous thing. I've got time because there are many people who have said, I've got time. And they never return. Why take a chance when you know that God is offering you life when all the things that we have dearly, those are important, put first things first because that day may never come. So in this case, the man began to realize, wait a second now, he says, my father has so many, many servants. Here I am suffering. Now, verse 18, the first, the second step of being accepted. And he says, I will arise and go to my father. Now, this is like he, haven't, he hasn't done that yet. It is the same thing as the first on verse 12. He already thought of himself and says, Dad, I want my portion. It's the same thing. Now, instead of going down, it's going up in restoration. He's a resolution. He says, wait a second. Now, he began to think, wait a second. I said, and verse 18, write down of that resolution. It is a, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and earth, and you. What he's saying is that he began. He hasn't been there yet. See, here's the thing about this. Listen to this very carefully. You can plan as much as you want. You can even write down your resolution. But unless you go to the next one to do it actually, it stays the same. It won't move. But this one, he began to think about, Lord, here I am, my father. He's simply saying is that he was actually what? He was actually repeating to himself. He was trying to get the energy and the desire to do it because he has to do it. But he hasn't done it yet. He was repeating. You remember those uh, husband before you courted your wife? What did you do? Before you get there, you write down your, especially when you're, it's like a, you want to be engaged or you want to say the word. What do you do? You begin to articulate it within you before it comes out. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Right? And so in this case, look at this. When he had the resolution in his heart, it feels he began to have remorse already. It wasn't done yet. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't taken out yet. The remorse is within already. He has a remorseful heart already. But he has to do, he has to deal with the man because he violated his trust. Although he's remorseful, have you heard this? Oh, don't worry. They know I, 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 I'm sorry, right? But they never, listen to me, there can be pride in you, in us. When we violate someone or when we make somebody, ang- uh, somebody, somebody, have the courage to tell that person if they're still alive, saying, I'm sorry. Because if you don't say it, you are still keeping it within you and won't release you. And this man, the son, are you following? I hope you are. This is like, it, it, this is my story too and some of you. And he was what? He was remorseful. The next one, verse 20, is the thir- next stage. From resolution to being remorseful for trying to just uh, psychologically or mentally exercise, what did he do? And he arose. That means he, was, he wasn't, see, listen to me very careful. God is not interested with fans. Listen to me. God is not interested in having a good sense of what we know about him. 
Jesus Christ always says, he who has an ear, let him hear. What he's saying, he's actually throwing good seeds and anyone who wants to know him, follow him. Because he is a God that can be trusted. He's the God that says, I will do it when he says, I will do it. So when you promise something, when you promise you have to do it, and in this case, the son began to exercise first to have his ability, but then here's where the difference is. He arose. He got up. He got up. And the same thing. And he says, and then his return, verse 20 and then when he was a far way off, and we will get there later on, the father, his father saw him. Now, interestingly here, the father didn't chase after him. And we will see later on why. Because there's, there's a beautiful uh, part of this on the two stories that Jesus Christ tells. Sometimes there's a time when God will just, you know, um, like this, he waited. But at the same time, the Spirit of God pulled him. But then when that man began to realize, the father was there. You know, I remember my mom, she, she has a way of reverse psychology. When I, when I violated her trust, I, when I come in, and you know them, uh, they know me, and says, Mom, I'm sorry. Why? You know, why did you do it? No, no they're, tr they're trying to, you know, parents, You've, how many times have your son or daughter have tell you, I'm sorry, what do they do? And they do it again, right? So what do you do? The next time around, like Rebecca, if she comes in and says, Dad, I'm sorry. Why? Why did you burn the coffee? Why? You know? and I, why? You know, you just digging in deeper until, and then if, if, if I don't see Becca crying, I would say, well, why, Becca, why? That's, and they'd be, I'm sorry, Dad, I'm sorry. No, that's real. Okay, you're forgiven. Why? It is something that needs to be done so that the person won't have that ticket. Oh, I got away. Whew, that's easy. All right? And so now when he says that, and he arose and the father, look at him, he hugged him. This is a picture of God. He hugged him and he kissed him. In the Middle Eastern culture, kissing is a sign of acceptance. Acceptance. When you are accepted, in, even in, 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 a, in a way, they begin, but that is not enough. The next one, look at this. The next one we will talk about. The, and the son said to him, verse 21, that is repentance. From remorse, which is internally, to repentance in the sight of all his servants, the son, repentance, true repentance is going back and return to God. Positionally, and a change of heart. The repentance. The repentance says, and the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Is that the same confession as the, when he was remorseful? Yes, nothing has changed. Simply meaning, even though the situation may have changed, his heart is really for real. It's for real. And the father kissed him before even he accepted. And then he said, oh. Let me give you. And then what did he do? And the son, and the father, and the father says, said to him, to his servants, bring out three items. The best robe. Now the best robe could be something that the father has prepared for this man. I will tell you later on what that means. The robe and put on, put on him, put on him, and a ring on his hand and sandal on his feet. Now put one, two, and three there. The robe. The ring and the sandals, those are very important. The robe symbolizes an honor. Honor, your dignity, honor. You will be robed. The ring in the Middle Eastern country, they have their rings with the emblem of their family. Remember this. He had those before. He lost his what? The best robe, he lost his honor. And the sandals, when you are a free man you are you have your sandals but when you become a servant and nothing your shoes are taken out so that your dignity three things that he lost as a prodigal he lost his honor he lost his 
dignity, and he lost his identity. Nothing. What did the father do? Oh, I want you to know what God's heart is. God wants you to have honor, dignity, and identity. He gave him the best robe. As a matter of fact, it would be something in his neck says, this is my son. The ring identifies him again. <sighs> when a king or a ruler during that time, when they seal something, they will seal it with their ring so that nobody can touch it. The father gave him the emblem of the, of the family. The sandals, you are no longer a servant. You are no longer, even though you may feel that you are now my son. He gave him back his identity as a son. On top of that, what did he do? They killed the innocent fatted calf. I don't know why it has to be a fatted calf. It says, this is the calf. Fit him all. But one of these days, we will have to offer you. Because what had happened? And he says, my son, who was dead, is now made alive. Now look at this. Let us surely, summer, let's add on, on, the, on the two stories that Jesus Christ had told him. Turn to your attention, please, to verse 3. All right? Look at this. So now we have a human person, right? God restored him. The next, the, the one that he says, verse 3 of fifth, chapter 15, verse 3. 15. So he said this parable. What man do you have having 100 sheep and lost one? Does he not leave the 99 that are saved? All right, the second one. And he would say, he will arise up and rejoice. The second one is this. I can tell you, verse 7 says, that there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 90 that are saved. Verse 8. Again, another, another uh, comparison. He says, or what woman having 10 silver coin, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the floor, and search carefully until she finds it. And when she found it, she calls her friend and neighbors together saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I tell you to you, there will is joy in the presence of the angel over one sinner. Now, what is the importance of that coin? Now you can see the gravity of the importance of that coin, simply meaning it's called drachma. It is a very special ring that is given to married wives that they keep for themselves. Now the ring is inanimate, meaning once you put it somewhere, it won't move. Right? Listen to me. It is very... When a ring is lost, wherever that is, it's going to stay there forever and ever. Amen. So the woman has to retrace her steps because she will lose her identity, her dignity, and an opportunity if she doesn't have that when the husband comes home. She has to find it. That is the reason why the gravity of that woman saying, oh, I found it, I found it. When my husband comes back, I have it because I haven't lost my identity that I belong to him. You know how gra gravity is, uh, you know how important, but the sheep, 99 are, are fine, one is lost, and, and the shepherd, now, Christians are called the sheep, right? And if she is she, she a sheep, they're, they're, we're considered as if lambs without any, we don't, we're not fighters, we just meek as a lamb, right? We're meek as a lamb, and that's the reason why he, he tried to find it. Now, in the third one, the prodigal son. Amen. Now we come to humanity. A lost sheep, something that doesn't move, and a man who has the ability to reason out. The father is waiting, but when he saw the son afar off, he ran towards him. Even though he violated the trust, he ran off. Now, let me tell you a story. A story is told about a man who commissioned a great artist to picture the prodigal son, not in that generation, but in this generation, which means that the father 
portray him. And, 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 he, and, and the guy said, okay, I, I know what you want. Taking key cue from the Bible, he changed his clothing, the father, with a house, you know, in, in his robe. You know, uh, and then the son, this heel, bowing down in the father, was hugging on the road, you know, the house. And the one who commissioned him says, man, that is good. He was about to pay him. Remember this. The father was about to pay the, uh, the, uh, the man who commissioned. He was about to pay the artist. But he saw something that is different. He saw the father wearing two different shoes. One was red and one was white. He was about to pay. He moved back. Hey, I commission you to give me the best portrayal of the father of, of the prodigal's father you made a mistake and the artist says no i did that on purpose you see the father says didn't have a chance didn't have time to get his best shoes he grabbed the first two shoes that he had and he put them on and he ran to the son simply meaning he says that is like the father that we have in christ the father might have the same shoes, but he's just proving this, that he can go after each one of us. A story is told by, by Max Locato. A girl named Cristina lives in Brazil in Rio de Janeiro. And the girl was just, man, he says, I'm so cooped up in, this, in my mom's house. I need to be set free. Then one day, she took all her stuff and ran off to the place called the Orido de Janeiro. From where she was, there was no fan. Now she was in Rio de Janeiro trying to find her future. The mother, as soon as she came home, saw everything. She knew exactly where her daughter would be because she's been telling her about it. The mother went after her, ran up to Rio, to that city where the blinking of lights and everything was just an enticement, and she couldn't find it. And the mother had an idea. Went on to the photo booth. Instead of picturing, putting a picture of her daughter, she took pictures of her, the mother, because she doesn't want her to be embarrassed. So she took a lot of pictures of herself, selfie put them on all the places where she would think her daughter would come. Days passed by, weeks gone by, months. There was no news from the daughter. Now the daughter is no longer the, the happy-go-lucky freedom in the world. She was now a lady girl that was used, up, used like a prostitute. No more joy. She, was, she found out in reality there was nothing. She went back to her, what they call even that home, the place that where they stay. In her heart, she has, man, I want to go back. But she's embarrassed. When she was stepping off to that house, her eyes saw a little picture. And when she passed, she saw a very familiar picture back and he took that little picture a picture of her mom and written in the back and she filled it in. the mother says Christina whatever you have done please go back home whatever we have done please go back would you please bow your heads? Father, we thank you this morning. We are in the midst of our fasting and prayer. And I pray, God, today, Lord, that, that you would speak to each one of us. I pray, God, that the door is wide open, that you want us to be forgiven, to be accepted, and to be restored. 
I pray, God, that this short, uh, this message has found good ground tonight. Father, your word says it, it's a discerner. The word is a discerner of the intent of our heart. No one can judge but you. But it is my prayer, God, as your under shepherd. Lord, would you, would you, God, allow us to come back? Whatever we have done, whatever we have caused, we can go back to you. In reality, the father is the prodigal. Lavishly giving his love and life to each one of us. Holy Spirit, we ask you, what will profit a man, the word God says, if he gains the whole world and loses so? What can he give in exchange for his life? The Lord tells us that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's a time of decision. I do believe this time is ordained by God. God wants you to be restored. Your identity, your honor and dignity he prepared the best robe, the ring of the family, and the shoes that are preparation of the gospel of peace. Would you allow? Time to come, in Jesus' name. If that is your heart cry, and you, it's time. Would you pray this prayer, Father? I confess that I'm a sinner. Separated from you, I've done things in my life, relationships that I am so embarrassed to tell my loved ones. But you ask me where I am. Here I am, God. Forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ died. I believe that he gave his life for me. Jesus, I open my heart. I accept you as my Savior. Thank you so much, Lord God. In Jesus' name. the Lord is tagging your heart, can you just come? Come. The Lord is tagging your heart saying, look, I just want to make things right. Come. Don't be embarrassed. No one else is going to die. You come. Wherever you are, you can bring your family. If you want to rededication, just come and allow the embrace of the Father, the love of the Father to come. Come. In Jesus' name. If you are with someone, just tell, ask them, hey, come on, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. Give them that encouragement to come. Come. Just come. Just come to the foot of the altar. Come. Yes, oh God. Father, so as your sons and daughters are coming, you know who we are. You know our state. You know. We confess before you our frailties. We confess before you our lack. Lord, your sons and daughters, families even, I pray, God, that you will restore them. Give them the best robe. Give them the ring of the family and put those sandals. Identify them with your sons and daughters. I pray, God, that you will. Lord, even now I come against torture of the past past is past 
I pray, God, that you will have the bomb of Gilead, the blood of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will cover the past, things of the past, oh God. When the enemy tries to remind us of our past, God, Lord, cleanse our heart and mind and thoughts. That today, God has given us the best robe, the ring, and the sandals for identity. For if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Saints, do you hear me? Do you hear that word? Everything has become new. You are now the son and daughter of the mighty king. You are now the son and daughter of the mighty God. You are now the son and daughter of the Holy One. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God. Lord, I pray as we continue to live in this world, God, I pray that we will not anymore lose our identity that is in Christ. Jesus Christ lives in our heart. Lord, I pray that even the clutches of drug, even the clutches of addiction, whatever the form that may be, nicotine, drugs, alcohol, sexual immorality, I pray, God, that you will begin, Lord, to make us overcomers in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, just like the prodigal son, I will arise. I will go. Victory is only found in Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Surround each one of us with the Father's embrace, the Father's love. Help us, oh God, to continue. Help us to be disciples. Help us to be followers. The road may be bumpy. The road may not be smooth, but we have, been, we have determined just like the prodigal son. Not only that we will continue to exercise mentally, but we will arise in the name of Jesus. And we know you love us, Father. We thank you for the prodigal, the lavish, the extravagant love that you gave through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we honor you. We honor you. Help us to live a life. Would you pray this prayer with me? Father, we come before you, <laughs> leaving our past at the foot of the cross, never to touch it anymore. For it is forgiven. It is sealed by the blood. I am a new creation, Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, everything has come, become new. In the name of Jesus, I have a future set. I am determined to live a life of victory by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah, Lord.
Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace. I ask you now, Lord, from the crowns of our head, the soles of our feet, Lord, let healing take place. Let healing, Lord, we ask you, God, that you will heal us from the crown of our heads to the wood of our feet, feet. Restore relationship. Pray, God, that you will enlarge our hearts to be forgiving, to be accepting, and above all, oh God, to be dedicated to you until you come. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone will say, Amen and Amen. Amen. Give somebody a high five before you, you may be seated. Tell them, God is good. Lawrence.